Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, very happy to be here talking to you about MapleStory Universe and what we're doing in the blockchain space. All right, so for people who may not be entirely familiar with the MapleStory franchise, let me give you a quick overview of what we're about. I don't know if you recognize these characters, but then we have a very cute aesthetic. We have some cute monsters going on here. But then what is more remarkable than these cute aesthetics and monsters and characters is that we're talking about a game that is now 21 years old. And we're talking about a game that has more than 250 million players worldwide. We're also talking about a game that is more than $5 billion in lifetime revenue. And this is a remarkable number because it's actually bigger than the box office revenue of Frozen. With that being said, you know, MapleStory has had a great run for the 20 years that we have been in service. There were a lot of users, community has been amazing. And, you know, basically we had a great run. But then why stop there? We were thinking, all right, so we had a great 20 years of history, but then what can we do for the next 20 years? And also, looking into the history and what we were all about, the game was not without flaws, I have to admit. Firstly, let's look at how we do business, basically, in the online space today. If you look at free-to-play games, a lot of them are based on microtransactions. And how that actually works, if you think about it, is in order to drive sales on microtransactions and say, hey guys, do you want this new item? You have to introduce new bosses or new challenges that the user needs to overcome. And with that, you introduce new items and you say, hey, if you do not buy this item from the store, then you will not be able to defeat that new boss. You will be irrelevant. And basically, the items that you currently hold are irrelevant. And so we are devaluing the items and the asset values of what, is, what the player is currently holding in order to drive sales. We're causing inflation in power and in items to do that. But for why? Like, why are we doing this? It's we need a content, we, we need to cover content costs. I mean, we are a business, and as you will already be aware, the cost of producing content and better content goes up and up every year. And in order to thrive and survive as a business, we're pushed to create this inflation, and we need to ask ourselves, is this sustainable? Also, we're talking about a pretty big community here because these people that are playing MapleStory that are on any game, they're most, more sophisticated than ever before and they want the best experience. However, what we're giving them over here, does it really cut it? Like, are we giving them the best experience ever? I think the current structure of how online games is made does really not allow us to do that to the full. So there is a fragmentation. There is a discrepancy between what the users want and what we can give the users. And basically what this has created is a structure in which the developers and users and builders are not happy with each other at the end of the day. We're not aligned in our incentives. So we wanted to fix that. Firstly, we wanted to align the interest of all participants here. We wanted to say through blockchain that we're going to make everyone happy, basically. Also, what we really wanted to do here was capture community contribution. If you think about the experience of playing a game, of course you go into the client, you do play the game, but then is that it? Is that all that it is to it? If you think about the experience of playing MapleStory or some other game to that extent, you also think about your experience talking to people about MapleStory, going online to find a walkthrough about MapleStory, or even you know, playing fan creations of MapleStory and enjoying fan art, all that constitutes the experience of playing a game. But then are we really capturing that? Are we giving credit to the community and really acknowledging what they do? But currently, what they are doing is at best copyright infringement, and of course, we are not honoring the community properly. So basically, the core ethos of MapleStory Universe and what we're doing here in blockchain is to fix all of these problems and to introduce a new model of online gaming that basically can sustain, that can align, and that can really provide more value for the future. So here's an overview of MapleStory Universe. Basically, how we would like to characterize this is that MapleStory Universe is an IP ecosystem based on the MapleStory IP. 
And at its core, we have Maple Story N, which is the Web3 version of the classic game. However, what's really interesting is that there are NFTs. All the characters and in-game items inside this game are going to be NFTs. And there will be a token called NXPC that ties the structure together that allows this flow of NFT and token to organically work with each other. And why are we doing this? We want the experience of a game or an IP to go beyond the limitations of a single client. We're talking about derivative experiences here. We're talking about the community contributions and providing more experiences that go on top of a game because a game should not be limited to just the client anymore. And so we have synergy apps that are derivative experiences on all platforms. It could be on PC, mobile, console, or anything else that add on to the core MapleStory experience or the core or IP experience to ultimately deliver a user experience that is satisfactory, that is compelling, and that is meaningful. So firstly, let's kind of go back a little bit and talk about the details of what are NFTs inside this space and how we wanted to characterize this. Firstly, all the characters, basically your avatars and in-game items, gears like swords or cosmetics, everything is an item, NFT in our space. And what this enables for us is that firstly, these are interoperable, of course, and this allows for your assets and for your characters to travel between these experiences and actually provide a connected experience overall. Also tradable, definitely. This is a very big part of MMORPGs, and the crux of what you experience in a game really kind of depends on the fact that it is tradable. Now your assets have value, and people agree to that value. This is a really big thing. But what is more important is that NFTs in this space are dynamic. We have the enhancement system, which I will go into detail a little, little bit further, that gives new value, gives add-on value to the NFTs that are already there. You can enhance the vanilla items to add more you know, options onto it, add more abilities onto it, that completely changes how this gear is gonna work inside the game and in other derivative experiences. And we also have the token, as I mentioned, that ties all of this together. Like just having NFTs and items doesn't really cut it. So what is this used for? When structuring our tokenomics, we really wanted to think about like how this was all gonna work together at the end of the day, how we were gonna align and incentivize the participants to do this. So what NXPC does is it is used to create NFTs and release NFTs out into the ecosystem. And what you can do with NFTs, other than of course enjoy inside the game, is you can gather that to unlock NXPC. So basically what we have created here is a very tight relationship between the token and the NFT and their values therefore. And the structure is made so that we can actually incentivize and really support the builders and creators to come in and build with the MapleStory IP at the end of the day. So the only way that you can get NXPC, you can get that released into the ecosystem is by operating and building synergy apps. And as a builder, you would take this NXPC, you would unlock NFTs from the vault, and you would place these as rewards and synergy apps. And then what that would do is you're creating a great experience for the end users. End users will come in and increase the utility of NFTs, basically you know, give meaning to all of these items. And what that does for the builder is that they would get rewarded NXPC on a weekly basis for their contributions. And so we're creating a positive cycle in which the builders create good experiences for users. Users just being users and having a great time incentivizes the builders back. And so with this, we want to create an ecosystem of synergy apps and also a structure that just really enables people to do what they like doing organically. Yeah, so kind of going back into the details, we are creating an alignment of incentives for both the builders and the users. This is the decentralization of creation because this reward system, it's not us giving NXPC out to these players or builders, it's the protocol and the system rewarding that. And we, as a developer, will also fall under the same category and will be subject to the same rules. And at the end of the day, we are using the concept of contribution and reward to really propel the ecosystem and provide the MapleStory IP as a means to come together as a community and build together. So going into a little bit more detail, 
here's the overview of MapleStory Universe so far. And these are the apps are, that we're going to be building and showcasing to the world as an example of what you can be doing with the MapleStory IP. As I've mentioned, there is the core game MapleStory and at the center. And then we have other synergy apps like the Marketplace, the Navigator, the Explorer, the Questing System, and so much more to come. But these are just examples. Let me go into a little bit more detail about the core game MapleStory and that will be the prime example of what you can do here. So we did have a video, but unfortunately, I'm a little bit short on time, so I'll cut that and explain a little bit more instead. So if you know MapleStory, we have the classic version of MapleStory, but then the Web3 version of MapleStory is going to be a parallel, completely separate experience that uses RWE elements to enhance and upgrade the game. If you think about sequels, usually you think of graphic updates, you think of engine updates. We're actually working on the core of the game, and you can also think of this as an engine upgrade of sorts because we're going back into the roots of what this game is all about and saying, here are the lessons that we have learned through the 20 years. Here is how we're going to better this game. So firstly, we do not have any premium shops inside the game. We got rid of the microtransactions model, and we're saying we're going to be profitable as a business in a completely different way. And all users, we're going to stay very true to our free-to-play roots, all users will be able to come inside the game and start playing without any pre-purchases or pre-sales. What they need to do to acquire NFTs? Play the game. What do they need to do to play? gain a character, play the game. It's as simple as that, and we're keeping the experience real. However, um, that would not be it for this game. At the end of the day, what we really want to do is to be able to provide a sustainable ecosystem. So we will be controlling the item supply that is released out into the ecosystem, into the game at a time. And what that does for the game is it controls the inflation rate and controls the power inflation rate inside of the game. I'm not saying that we're going to get rid of that forever. It's just natural progression for you know, values to change over time. But then can we do it in a controlled manner? Can we provide a safe environment for players to play games in? This is what we're trying to do in MapleStory N. Also, as I mentioned, dynamic enhancements. This is a big part of how you play the game. This gives you freedom. This gives you strategy. This gives you a groundwork in, on which you kind of build on top of. So you are free to play the game your way and however you see fit. And enhancements, which is really kind of fun here, is done on a supply and demand basis. So previously, in every sort of game, like enhancement pricing or the price that you needed to pay was fixed. But then here, it will be based on supply and demand. So now you are playing a game of market. You're playing a game of strategy against other users and going into the game and saying, how do I play against other players to get the best result? So this adds a new layer of entertainment onto the previous game. And with all of this and many more details that I haven't mentioned, ultimately what we're doing here is we're building for sustainability. We're building for the next 20 years of MapleStory. We're building for the next 20 years of a great game on blockchain. And we had some preliminary results from our pioneer test that we had on July. So it was a 10-day test, and we had 1,000 people participating in the test. And we were actually surprised to see some amazing results. I'm sorry, I'm going to skip the video. So we had an 82% of retention during the entire 10 days. And this is remarkable because this means that more than 82% of people decided to stick around for the entirety of the 10 days of the test regardless of the result. I mean, this was on a test night. Like, people were playing beyond the, the suggested timeline. They were enjoying the game. And more than 82% of people organically decided to do that. It just kind of proves that we have a good user experience here. And what more, we had more than 195,000 transactions just in 10 days, just with the 10,000, like 1,000 people. This kind of showcases how much this can grow on chain. And I'm very proud to say and happy to say that us building on the Avalanche subnet, it had no problems whatsoever. And it was a very smooth experience despite this many transactions happening. Also, we had a very healthy token usage rate, which means that supply, demand, sync, and supply of tokens were as healthy as possible. This is a very crucial and important part when operating an MMRPG that is based on economy, as we have seen through our experience in live operations. Also, the NPS score of users was more than 4.6. 
People were happy to play the game and we were happy to you know, provide that to them. We're all more excited about what's to come after this. So back to the overview. I think this is really exciting for us because building with MapleStory is not limited to a single developer anymore. And with blockchain, we can decentralize, we can properly incentivize and acknowledge the community to come in and build with us. I think this provides a lot more potential for users at the end of the day to kind of experience you know, what is there with the IP, with their NFTs, with their assets, and provide more that they can do. So rather than being a secluded, like a closed community and environment, we're saying we're gonna be building with the community, we're using tokens, we're using NFT, and we're using this technology to properly incentivize people in doing so. And at the end of the day, that's what MapleStory Universe is all about, and that's what we're here to do. So. Come join us on MapleStory Universe, msu.io. We are live and we will be preparing a larger user-facing test later in November. And so we would love to see you guys there. Thank you.